If you look out of the window now, maybe it's raining. Maybe it's sunny. Maybe it's snowing. But that's what it's like today. It doesn't mean it'll be like that tomorrow. Okay, guys, let's talk about weather. Basically, weather is the daily condition of the Earth's atmosphere. Weather is produced by the interaction of several factors, which include heat, air pressure, winds, and moisture. Let's briefly look at each one of those factors. Heat transferred from the sun is absorbed by the Earth and spread through the atmosphere. Air temperature varies from place to place because the sun's rays strike the Earth at different angles. Air pressure is the measure of the force of the air pressing down on the Earth's surface. Air pressure depends on the density of the air. Denser air exerts more pressure than less dense air. Air pressure on the Earth can vary considerably from location to location due to unequal heating of the atmosphere. These air pressure differences cause the movement of air, which we call wind. Finally, the amount of moisture in the air, called relative humidity, also influences weather. Moisture in the atmosphere condenses, causing clouds to develop and precipitation to fall to the earth. So, have you come up with the difference between weather and climate? I said earlier that weather is the daily condition of the earth's atmosphere. But what about climate? Well, for most of us, climate means a location is hot, cold, wet, or dry. You see, Climate is the average weather conditions for a specific region over an extended period of time. The climate of any place is determined by two main factors, temperature and precipitation. The Earth is divided into three major climate zones based on the average temperature of these zones. They are the tropical, temperate, and polar zones. Can you determine what climate zone you live in? Many factors influence a region's climate. Perhaps the most important of these is the sun. The sun is the source of all light and warmth for every place on Earth. However, not all places receive the same amount of sunlight. This is because of the way in which the Earth moves around the sun. The Earth is constantly in motion. It is continually spinning on its axis an imaginary line running through the center of the Earth from the North Pole to the South Pole. This motion is called rotation. At the same time the Earth is rotating on its axis, it is also traveling around the Sun. This second movement is called revolution. The amount of time it takes for the Earth to make one revolution around the Sun is called a year. The Earth's axis is not straight up and down, but tilted. Because of this, as the Earth revolves around the Sun, different parts of the Earth are tilted towards the Sun at various times of the year. For example, in July, the Northern Hemisphere is facing toward the Sun. But half a year later, in January, it is tilted away from the Sun. This movement of the Earth results in the different seasons of the year. When a hemisphere is tilted toward the sun, it receives more direct sunlight. The more sunlight a place gets, the warmer it becomes. Of course, if one side of the Earth is facing toward the sun, the other side must be facing away from the sun. When a place gets less sunlight, the weather becomes colder. So, for example, when it is winter in the northern hemisphere, it is summer in the southern hemisphere. There are other factors besides the sun that determine climate. In some places, the weather stays warm year-round, while in other parts of the world, it is cold all the time. One reason for this is latitude. Another factor that affects the climate of an area is whether it's n that area or region is near a large body of water. Now, we're not talking about a small little lake. Uh, but something huge like the Gulf of Mexico, one of the oceans, or even Lake Ontario slightly as well. So imagine we have uh, two locations, two cities. So uh, here's the land and here's the large body of water. 
over here. So some places are inland cities, so they're really far away. Let's think like Nebraska or Kansas. So here is city A, and we'll have city B, which is right on the water, and we're talking about maybe Washington, D.C. or Miami. So one is an inland location, city A. The other is a coastal city, city B. Because of water's high specific heat, it is going to take longer for that water to heat up. It's also going to take longer for that water to cool down. So you remember from the front page of your reference tables, liquid water has a specific heat of over 4 joules per gram. Yet land, which is made out of rock, maybe some basalt and granite, that has a specific heat of less than 1 joule per gram. So that, that land is going to heat up a lot faster than the water is going to heat up. Another factor that determines a region's climate is elevation. Elevation is the height of an area above sea level. Generally, the higher an area's elevation, the colder its climate. Because of this factor, snow can be found year-round on top of high mountains, even when the weather is warm down below. Another important aspect of a region's climate is the amount of precipitation that falls. In some places, it rains or snows nearly every day. Other places may be completely dry for most of the year, with rain coming only in certain months, like during the monsoon season in India. Wind, too, can have an effect on an area's climate. Depending on from which direction winds blow, they can be either warm or cool. Winds blowing from the tropics carry with them warm air. Similarly, winds blowing from polar regions bring cold air. Water currents can act the same as wind currents by carrying warmth or coolness from one part of the world to another. One example of this is the Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream refers to ocean currents that carry warm water from the Gulf of Mexico to places as far north as Norway. Due to the effect of these water currents, even though Norway is located near the Arctic Circle, its climate is warmer than that of most places in the polar regions. Geographers divide the world into six main climatic regions, tropical, subtropical, temperate, subpolar, polar, and highlands. Each of these climatic regions are defined by both temperature and precipitation. Climate has a great impact on people's everyday lives. Among other things, it affects what they wear and what kind of houses they live in. Tropical climate, like in Western Africa, desert climate, like in Arabia, Mediterranean climate, like in Sicily, continental climate, like in the USA, equatorial climate, like in Indonesia, and so on.